Hey guys, it's Troy here. Wanted to share with you some of my recent acquisitions over the past several months here. And these are nice little ones. Well, with the exception of this one, that's not a, a real tiny one, but some small pens here in my collection. Uh, just to give you an example for reference, here's a like a blue Sharpie marker. So I'm going to set that down so you can see the size comparison uh, by a standard size Sharpie marker in these pens here. All right. So, uh, but these are all from the 1920s and possibly into the 19 early 30s. And uh, I've been sharing some vintage here or there. My last video was of a vintage Waterman. Well, here I've got some pens, uh, two Conklins, one Eisenstadt, and one Pick. Now, some of these brands you may not be familiar with. And the reason I picked them up is because I enjoy a vintage B, I enjoy something a little out of the ordinary, which is why some of these are now in my collection. So, let's share with you first this one here. This is an Eisenstadt, E-I-S-E-N-S-T-A-D-T, -E as I recall. And here is the imprint right there, the Eisenstadt Manufacturing Company out of St. Louis, Missouri. And I picked this one up because it's a little bit different than your normal old lever filler style pen. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've got a video that was put out by Antique Digger. Uh, Greg uh, did this video way back in July of last year. I don't normally have these, but this is an Eisenstadt made out of St. Louis, and it's known for its reverse lever. Usually the lever flips up from this end, but it flips up from this end and go this way. But uh, the clips are usually pretty uh, distinguishable. You got the Eisenstadt logo on the clip and the and the lever bar. Uh, this is made of black chase hard rubber. You can see it's got like lining pattern around the cap and barrel. And there's the Eisenstadt number two size St. Louis, Missouri uh, logo. It has a great nib on it. Very responsive and flexible. It's an Eisenstadt number two, 14K, ranges from a 0.61 to 2.19, so medium to triple broad. Okay, so did you pick up on that? The reason I got this one is, well, first, I didn't know it was going to be this small, but, you know, you saw it was that small in his hand, so I figured, okay, it might be in my hand as well. Uh, but did you catch the lever? The lever is a reverse lever filler. Here is a lever filler that is in my collection from Waterman. It sits on my desk. The lever lifts from here towards the front of the pen. That was a standard way of levers filling. This one actually goes the opposite direction. And the whole idea was, with Eisenstad, um, was that they didn't want the lever to catch as you put it into a gentleman's pocket, thus expressing some of the ink out of it. So Eisenstad, it was a St. Louis, Missouri company. They were a jewelry company. That was their primary deal. And they uh, did jewelry from 1853 up to about 18... Uh, 1981. Okay, so they've been they were around for a good while, and they were doing pens from the 1920s into the 30s. Uh, so they didn't do pens a whole long time in their history, but they were back in the heyday. So you get that black chased hard rubber here, um, and it's actually a decent writing little pen. I'll give you some uh, writing samples with these. I already ran this out of ink, and I refilled it just before uh, pushing play on this particular video. Same with this one here, because I had already been using them and ran out of ink. Uh, but I'm going to uh, go ahead and show you the others, and then we'll do a, a writing sample of how these vintage pens w w work. Okay, so this one here, Conklin. Conklin Endura. I already have some Conklin Enduras in my collection, much larger than this one. I've got one that's uh, more of an orange. Um, and I've got another one. I'm trying to remember what the other color is off the top of my head, but I do like the old Conklins. Now, not the modern name Conklin that's out there nowadays. I'm talking the vintage stuff. We're talking from the 1920s, maybe early 1930s. The uh, Conklin Company out of Toledo, Ohio, one of the, the bigger manufacturing companies, and actually, I enjoy a lot of their vintage stuff. A very common Conklin clip that you see there 
and it's a, just an absolute beautiful color, that Lapis uh, color that's on this Endora. They still have a nice engraving here or a imprint there on the barrel. Hopefully you can see that okay because I know my light source is a little bit low here. Um, and you can see that lever right there. It's a cute little thing. That's an adorable uh, pen and an adorable looking little lever on it. And like I said, I just inked that up. You've got the little Conklin smile that's on that nib. And it's a good little writer. I'll go ahead and show you how that one writes. Conklin also used to make crescent fillers. Now, crescent fillers are kind of making a comeback uh, with modern incarnations of the product. Um, but this particular one here, uh, it's an older, probably 1920s, it'll get the overlay, it's got a ring top. So it was meant to be you know, you know, possibly carried on a necklace or something like that. And it does have that ring right here, that lock ring, that is so common with the, with the crescent filler. And the idea is you would be able to move that little slot on that lock ring and depress that crescent just like you would a lever. And there's a bar in there that'll go ahead and fill that ink sack. I'm not going to do it because this has been filled and I have been writing with it. And it's actually a great little writer now. Now, when I got it, um, this one wasn't writing tremendously well. It needed some tine alignment and a little bit of nib work on it in order to get it what I would consider to be acceptable. Uh, but it writes well, and at, at least it does now. And it was reliable when I first got it. There's a little number two Conklin nib on it. Um, now, it did seem to me that that nib and that feed sure stuck out in an awful f long way. But it also seems the way that shape of that feed, that it may be about right. But it sure is a long looking nib and feed on that thing. Uh, but you've got the little screw on cap onto this tiny little crescent filler. I thought that was kind of cute. It was a good looking little pen, so I went ahead and picked that up. I got this one uh, from the pen market. I've got their box that uh, one of these would come in. And uh, them, uh, uh, they are in Norwich, Connecticut. I've ordered from the pen market before. Uh, matter of fact, that's where this pick came from, as well as this, and some other pens that are in my collection. So over the years, I've ordered from them several times. So uh, this one came from Indie Pen Dance. I've ordered from them an awful lot, see them at shows, uh, even took uh, some classes from them at various pen shows with Mike and Linda. And Linda was my instructor for a nib smoothing class that I did. So moving on to this one. What do you think that is? Well, Pick is the brand name on it. I don't really see anything. There's really nothing to read. This is a well-worn and kind of scuffed up looking thing. But is it really, is it a pen? I don't know, you got that flat top and you've got a cross on there. That should be a clue as to what it might be. You open it up. Well, wait a minute, there's no nib or anything like that. There's a few holes on it up here. There's a few holes. Hmm. Well, there's a blind cap on the back end too. So let's take that blind cap off. And what do we got? Now, now it looks like it's just a open tube. Well, this is a Catholic holy water sprinkler meant for Catholic priests. I've actually seen ones like this from other manufacturers. I've seen them put out by Schaefer and, and uh, some by Waterman, as I recall. But I have never owned any. So when I saw this one for sale, the price was decent. I've seen some rather expensive ones in the past that I thought would be really cool to have in my collection because they were by decent brand names. Um, and it's more of an ephemera thing, more of something out of history. Um, I'm not going to get into Catholic doctrine, dogma, or doctrinal debates. Um, but um, I thought this was kind of neat to have in my collection because of the history of why they were manufactured and how they were used. Uh, this probably came out of like the 1930s, possibly into the 40s. Um, that's my guess. I don't know for sure. Uh, but the pick 
company. You know, actually, you know what? I'm going to date this better than that. I can, I'm going to date this into the 20s and the 30s. You know why? Because the Pick Company was only around from 1920 to 1933. So I take back what I said about the 30s and into the 40s. <laughs> uh, but the Pick uh, Manufacturing Company was a fountain pen company uh, that made some decent pens uh, out of Cincinnati, Ohio. So... Um, I should have looked at my notes. <laughs> but 1920 to 1933. So we know that this was probably manufactured um, by Pick in, in in the 20s to early 30s. So a holy water sprinkler. I, I did not fill it up with water, but um, it does post, so you can do that. Um, but you know, that... There is, there's actually some lettering on here, some imprint, but it's so well worn. It is really hard to read. You'd have to get a magnifying glass in order to properly read it. You're not going to probably be able to read it here, but there is an imprint there. Um, it's actually a little, uh, if, if you look really hard, you can find it. But, um, but anyway. It, it's really been beat over the years. You can tell that it's been scuffed up probably in a pocket uh, together with coins and keys or something like that. So let's go ahead and show you how, um, how these little boys write because they're kind of fun. You know, I'm not a pocket pen loving guy. I'm not a vest size pen loving guy. I do love vintage. I do appreciate the old stuff, the history. Um, some of them are just right cute and when you post them, they, they're actually halfway decent to write with, uh, but I enjoy uh, what goes into making them from the 1920s and 30s, which is my favorite period of fountain pens. Let's start out with an Eisenstadt. You know, I, you know that, that's the one thing I don't like about this pen, if I had to, to complain about it, would be that this lever does not stay locked in. It doesn't clip in. I mean, the, it's physically in good shape, but this is a little bit loose. Uh, but it, it doesn't really hamper anything. You just tap it back down and you're in business. This little pen does post on you, uh, or for you, and so it actually fits fairly well in your hand, and you're able to use it. And I've, I wrote with this an awful lot when I first got it. So um, I just inked it up, so let's go see how well this little Eisenstadt. And I like the little oddities uh, out of them. A little smaller in, in, in terms of being narrow in the hand, uh, but usually a nib like this is going to feel really well in your hand or do perform fairly well. So an Eisenstadt. That's horrible writing. An Eisenstadt. I don't know the model. But this little baby has got some great performance on this awesome little nib. Nice nib. Some awesome flex. So you get a nice little thin line to where you go. You get a nice big fat juicy line. Look at that. Great performance on this little nib. I did put some Waterman Black into it. Waterman is my go-to ink for most of my vintage pens. So you'll see me use various colors of Waterman. Um, black chased hard rubber pens, I typically will throw in Waterman Black because I've got several bottles of it. And that is my go-to though, Waterman inks. It doesn't take much to screw that little back thing back in in order for it to uh, catch. But that's an Eisenstadt. Nice little pen. Nice little nib. Really happy with that. So, but let's change up a little bit. Let's go to this Conklin Endora. You know, not the full size Endora, but you got the little baby Endora, as I call it. So, let's go ahead and write. This one, again, I just filled it. So, it skipped a little bit at first, but like I said, I just filled it. So I wasn't writing with it since I did the filling um, because I wore both of these pens out of ink, wrote them out, and they were sitting on my little, uh, my little 
bin of pens to clean uh, until I said, you know, let's go ahead and do a video on the group of pens rather than doing them individually. But this has got a fairly rigid nib. It's not a flex nib at all. But it's very, very uh, smooth. It's about a fine nib. And this one was extremely reliable. I use this an awful lot when writing my pen pals. And uh, I filled this one with Waterman's Serenity Blue. Great little writing pen. I really like it. And when you go ahead and you post that, it actually feels good in the hand. A little girthier than the Eisenstadt that I was just using. Uh, I love Conklin. Vintage Conklin, to be more specific. I've got some modern Conklins, and you know, I'm not a huge fan of modern Conklins. That's just me personally. Um, I, I'm not trying to say anything negative about Yaffa brands, but when it comes to Conklin, I definitely prefer the old namesake rather than its modern incarnation. So let's go back to another Conklin. And let's see how that nib does on it. Post that. It's definitely a thinner pen. Um, it's, if you would expect it to be a thin pen when you're looking at something that would hang on, uh, you know, like a necklace or on a keychain or a lanyard. So this one, also a Conklin. Very different feeling nib than that other one. This has much more of a flex. Look at how fat and juicy those lines get. It is not as smooth, however. This did have a tine alignment problem when I got it, and I had to fix that. And then I had to do a little bit of smoothing, but it writes so much better now than it did when it came right out of the box. You can hear there's a lot of feedback on this particular nib. But it, it sure is a, a, a feel-good flex. If you, there you go. It got it to railroad finally. <laughs> I was wondering how long it would take before I got it to railroad on me. And uh, without springing the nib or giving me any hassle. So Anyway, and that's the one thing I notice sometimes. You can't, once you railroad it like that, it takes a little bit for the nib to pick back up with its feed. I put into this one also some Waterman Black. So there you go. Cute little pen. I mean, it's a good looking pen. I, I love the old Conklin Crescent Fillers. I've got several in my collection already. Uh, and uh, I thought this was going to be a, a decent addition to it. Uh, you know, there was no personalization done to it. I kind of like the, the the gold overlay that is on it, that gold tone overlay. Um, it's just a, a decent writing pen, also probably from the 1920s. So there you go. These are my recent acquisitions even though uh, Greg did this one in July I just got it within the last couple of months I was just poking around looking for something to buy and uh, this was on his website at Antique Digger 10% off all your purchases AntiqueDigger.com use discount code Troy pen market I don't have any discount codes for you there sorry and nor do I have any for you at uh, uh, Independence but feel free to check them out anyway pick little different you know it's not a pen it's more of ephemera if you wanted to call it that and but it was neat to add that into my collection because having seen that um, in other brands I thought that would be a neat thing just to have just for fun um, and these are fun to write with you know even though I don't like smaller pens quite as much they actually have been a lot of fun so if you wanted to add something into your collection I can tell you that each of these pens um, you know, 165 and under for the most part for these. And if I remember, this one was a couple hundred bucks. 
um, and it's just kind of the rarity. Um, but these all came restored. This one obviously didn't come restored um, because it didn't need to be. Uh, but it is scuffed up. Maybe I can polish it up a little bit, get some of those scuffs out. But there you go. Some uh, interesting, cute little things if you're looking for something vintage to add to your collection. Thank you.